Hello YouTube, this is Glitch and I'm back with another video for you guys. Two months ago I showcased the Mag254 from Infamer and talked about the benefits of saving money by cutting cable. As IPTV continues to gain in popularity, today I'm looking at another solution on the market and that is a Dreamlink T1 IPTV set-top box from Dreamlink. Now I'll preface this review by letting you know that this is not a sponsored review and I'd like to thank the folks at Dreamlink for sending the T1 out for evaluation. All the services and third-party plugins are developed through either different IPTV providers or different content developers. Dreamlink T1 is not responsible responsible for the content being played. Priced at 130 Canadian, the Dreamlink T1 is a full-fledged Android-based IPTV set-top box that offers all the functionality of the previous Dreamlink incarnations with the T4, T5, and T6. The T1 has been designed to change the way people watch television and features top-of-the-line electronics and a robust content delivery platform. The T1 comes neatly packaged inside a small rectangular box that includes a full-featured remote, power adapter, HDMI cable, AAA batteries, and an instruction manual. The specifications indicate that the unit is built with a high silicon quad-core processor running Android KitKat 4.4.2. It supports a wide variety of audio and video formats including Full HD at 1080p. T1 is housed in a black styles plastic casing with ventilation slots on the top to allow the device to maintain normal temperatures when in use. On the front of the T1 you'll also find the logo as well as a red LED which provides status indication for standby mode and a green LED which lights up when a key is pressed on an include remote. There's also a remote sensor which receives a signal directly from the remote control. On the back of the unit you'll find a USB 3.0 port, RCA AV out port, a digital audio Audio port, HDMI port, USB 2.0 port, 10100 Ethernet port, and a micro SD card slot for additional storage expansion, and a DC power adapter port. While the T1 supports built in Ethernet, you have the option of using the built in wireless adapter, which supports 802.11n with data transfer rates up to 150 megabits per second. Here is a size comparison of the Mag254 against the Dreamlink T1. Here you can clearly see that the Dreamlink T1 is slightly larger, measuring approximately 155mm by 128mm by 27mm. Both boxes are compliant with all kinds of stock or service, but the T1 has a slight advantage where it can scale up from 1080p to 4K Ultra HD picture quality if your television supports it. The Dreamlink T1 comes with a full featured remote control which includes options for power, resolution, live TV, video on demand, and channel groups. All the standard media player controls are available including fast play, play pause, stop, mute, and skip. A center D-pad allows you to navigate up, down, left, and right, and two plus or minus buttons on either side allow you to control the volume and switch channels. There's also a designated on-screen cursor arrow option that can be toggled on and off. Connecting the T1 to your television only requires a few easy steps. Plug any free network cable from your router into the 10100 Ethernet port. Next, use the include HDMI cable from the back of your television into the HDMI port on the back of the T1. Don't forget to plug in AC for power. Next, I'll show you what the Dreamlink T1 looks like when it's finally powered on. Now once you get past the splash screen of the Dreamlink T1, this is what you're greeted with on your television. Now because this box is Android based and not Linux based, you have the luxury of actually using the remote control that comes in the package. or uh, to make it a lot easier for yourself, you can actually plug in a wireless keyboard uh, using a USB dongle that can be actually placed into the back of the unit. Now looking at the main menu, I've actually got four options here. I've got a My App section, I've got a Market section, and a Tool section, as well as a Settings section. I'm going to start with the Settings section so you can see what needs to be done to actually configure the device prior to use. So in the settings section, I've got uh, various menu options. I, again, I'll start from left to right. I've got a language section that I, I can actually go through. And based on my location, I can set it to what language I want to use. I'm going to use uh, English Canada since I am in Canada. So I'll leave that as default. I've got a time and date section. So I can actually come in here and I can set the date and time. Uh, if I don't want to do it manually, I have the option of actually configuring it automatically. Um, I can set uh, what my time zone is. And if I don't like 12, uh, the 12 hour format, I can use the 24 hour military format. So that's a nice feature to actually have. I've got a network section. And in the network section, uh, you have two options of, of, of actually using the Dream Link on your network. Um, you have the option of using it via wired or via wireless. I would strongly suggest using it wired, that way you're not running into the issue of your stream or any content you're pulling down on the box being interrupted. If you've got a DHCP uh, server on your network, the device is smart enough to actually pick up uh, IP information from your DHCP server, so as you can see here, it's automatically assigned itself an IP address, subnet mask, it's picked up the gateway information as well as my DNS settings, and at, at the bottom left hand corner it's confirmed that the device is actually connected. Now if you don't have a wired connection, you can actually go to this Wi-Fi section here, turn on uh, the wireless option, and essentially if you give it a second, it'll go through and it'll start to show you wireless connections in your area. 
all you do is you find the wireless SSID that responds to you, put in your password and your web key, and you're good to go. Um, again, I strongly suggest if you've got a wired connection, use the wired connection instead of wireless, but again, it's a nice option to have. Now, you've got a parental lock option, and the parental lock option uh, allows you to put in a four digit uh, pin code. So if you have young kids or you have uh, siblings that you don't want them to access your content or change any of the menu, menu settings within the device, you can actually come here, set your pin code so if anybody tries to access it, they'll be prompted to put in the pin code information and whether they know it, they'll either be provided access or they'll be denied access. Going to the display settings, uh, you have the option here of setting the default uh, television or whatever you have this device configured on as your optimal display. You can go here and set the resolution and you can also configure the display area. So if I hit the display area, uh, here it allows me to actually adjust the screen just to make sure that I am getting the full display on my television. So I start with the top left. Once I'm happy with how that looks, I can hit OK on the remote and then it switches to a different option or a different section on the screen and again I can go through and I could do my adjustments which only take a couple seconds and once that's lined up uh, in the corner I can then exit and then that becomes my my default setting for the for the Dreamlink T1 on my television so that's kind of that's kind of cool system info so I've got four options here. I've got the model information, the software version, I've got the build date, and I've got an option to do a factory reset. Now, I will say prior to starting the filming of this video, once I connected the Dreamlink T1 to my network, it was smart enough um, to start auto-updating itself. It actually checked the firmware level uh, that was currently on the device, saw that it wasn't current, spent about five to seven minutes pulling down the latest information and then updated it to version 2.2.27. As you can see, um, it's tagged it with the current release of that firmware. So that's actually a nice uh, feature to actually have where you don't have to worry about running the latest stable firmware. It's self-aware that it'll pull down on information and update itself automatically. And finally, as I said, because this is an Android device, uh, you've got some Android settings. Similar to what you see on an Android uh, smartphone, you can go in here and uh, configure any of the Android settings that you want, which is kind of cool. Okay, now moving from the settings uh, section to the tools section, I just got four menu options here. I don't know whether or not these options will be relevant to uh, anybody, but again, they're available. I've got a file browser, so if I actually wanted to uh, put any um, SD, a mini SD card in the back of the unit, I actually wanted to view the content. I have the option of using this like a, an explorer view and actually going through and making sure that I can view content and move it around. I've got uh, a land section and a file section setting, so I'm not actually going to get into those. As I said, they're not relevant for most people, so I'm just going to skip them for this review. Miracast is similar to a Chromecast. If you've got a smartphone that supports casting, or you've got a tablet that supports casting, you can actually use this section here to actually uh, move that display off your smartphone or your tablet and then display it automatically on your screen. As you can see, it's telling you what sort of supported devices actually work. Chromecast works the exact same way, so this is, again, Miracast. It's a nice feature to have. Um, and uh, you've got the option of turning this into a Wi-Fi hotspot, so you would just turn on the wireless signal, and if you had any other devices that needed wireless access, you can use it here. Again, nice feature to have. I don't know if it applies to most people. Now moving to the marketplace. Um, this device is kind of unique in the aspect that you can actually uh, download applications that will run directly off the device. And as you can see on the left hand side, uh, they've got different categories. So if I wanted to uh, install an application that's specific to IPTV, here are my options that are available. So as you can see, the Dreamlink has their own um, IPTV client. You've got Kodi, uh, Media Center, SPMC, 
uh, and Sling TV. If we go to the movie section, I've got Showbox, Cartoon HD, Netflix, Film on TV, Hulu, Daily Motion, and Livestream. Under music, I've got XM Radio, Pandora, and Savin. Um, under the browser section, I've got Chrome, the Weather Network. Oh, there's a Facebook and a Twitter client, so that's good if you uh, want to keep up to date on your social media and have it display directly on the device. I've got a YouTube client, um, which is Google. Only two games here, Air Attack and Drone Air. Okay, uh, let me go back there. Uh, Built-in me uh, VPN client, so that's good to see. docs to go which is almost like Open Office or Microsoft Office. So if I want to, um, you know, edit any documents on the fly, I have that option available to me. And let's see, last one is an adults-only section, so RedTube. If I want to view any adult content, and that's where that four-pin option will come in handy if you want to keep your little ones out of the section. Now, um, the nice thing about these applications is that they don't take too long to download. If you're interested in one, all you have to do is actually click on it. You get a download option. It gives you a brief description in terms of what the actual application does. And when you click on the download button, it'll automatically pull it from the marketplace and install it on your device. Now, the download speed of the actual application depends on where you are and how fast your connection is. It normally doesn't take too long, as you can see here. It's pulling down the information uh, pretty quick. Once it's done uh, pulling down the information, it'll automatically uh, proceed to installing it on the actual box. And so there again, the installing option is now changed. And then once it's ready to go, that installing option will change to an open option. And then with a click of a button, you're able to open up the application and start using it. So now this is a, a change. The status has changed to open. So now if I want to launch Sling Television, I can launch it automatically. Now, you can, as I said, you can pick and choose which ones you want. Um, once they're installed, you can back out of the marketplace and go to the My App section. And the My App section will pretty much just go through the applications installed. So prior to starting this video, I actually picked a pick and chose a couple of applications that I installed automatically on the box, which I'll go through here. Um, the Dream Online application, I'll save that for last because that's actually kind of neat in terms of what it does, but it is an IPTV client, uh, which requires some level of configuration. So the YouTube client is exactly what it is. Uh, essentially, uh, it'll allow you to look at information on YouTube. So as you can see, uh, it's picked up some, well, let's see, these are popular videos right now in Canada for any of the YouTube options. So I can navigate either with the keyboard and the mouse, and if I'm interested in one, I can click on it and then play it automatically. So, uh, again, that's kind of nice to have. Let's back out of this. So I've got a built-in Chrome web browser. Um, so if I want to actually do any level of couch surfing, um, I can put in a URL again, I go to YouTube, and then using the remote or keyboard, I can actually highlight any one of these videos, click on it, and automatically it'll start to play. So I'm not going to do that here, uh, since you basically get the point of how that works. Okay, Showbox, um, if you are an Android, I, Android user or an iOS user, Showbox has actually been around for quite some time. There's uh, some debate on its legality, I'm not going to debate that for the video, but essentially what Showbox does, it's like a version, a legal, illegal version of Netflix, where you're able to view uh, television and current movie information. Here, uh, from the main menu, you see it's actually picked up some news feed information. Uh, but if I click on the menu here, I've got some options. I've got a movie section. I've got a television show section. I can watch trailers. I can tag these as any of my favorites. I can download them. And, of course, there's some updates. So if I click on the movie section, so within Showbox, I've got these options here at the top right-hand corner. I've got a sort by uh, option if I click on it. I can sort by added, name, rating, IMDB rating. There's a genres tab. 
I can break it down. So if I want to see any of the action, adventure, animation, anime, anime biography meetings, which is kind of cool. Let me click on adventure and automatically you see that it automatically resorts. Or I have the option of clicking on year release, so 2016 uh, going backwards. So for example, if I click on Mr. Deadpool here, <clears throat> I have the option of viewing this in 720p. Uh, you can download it, you can watch it now, enable subtitles, or I can watch the trailer. Uh, so if I click on watch now, let's see uh, if the stream starts automatically. Yeah, it goes out and automatically the picture starts to play, which is kind of cool. Okay. Cody, which is kind of nice. If you don't know a lot about Cody, Cody is an all encompassing uh, media application that allows you to. Um, centralize your media into one interface to allow you to navigate it quite easily. Um, I'll go into a, a fully detailed Kodi review sometime in the near future. I've used Kodi for quite some time. Uh, before it was called Kodi, it was called XBMC and I've used that for a number of years. So in a future video I'm going to go into uh, a lot of detail about Kodi and some of the plugins and how you can actually optimize it. Uh, to have a great video experience, but again, that'll be later on in the in another video. But again, with Kodi, you've got these sections. You can uh, configure it to look at your pictures, any video information, movies, music, programs, and systems. Um, so I've already pointed it to look at some of my local content. Um, so if I click on the movies tab essentially what it will do is it'll go through and take a look at one of my QNAP devices and pull up a listing of uh, some of the movies that I actually have available and the thing about Kodi is once you point it towards some local content it's got options for scrapers that actually go out and pull uh, cover information, actor information, synopsis information uh, which is kinda cool so for example if I wanted to take a look at, uh, let's see, Ace Ventura, click on it, <clears throat> and automatically it'll start to play the content locally. Uh, it'll tell me what format it is, it's in, if it's in English, I've got my player controls at the bottom, and I've got player controls if I want to skip through uh, more information in the video. Uh, that's a kind of a nice option to actually have. Uh, if I stop this, and again, um, all these videos are all categorized alphabetically. Um, lots of cool options here. Going back to the main menu, um, the thing about Kodi is it also has some plugins. Um, so if I go to programs and I go to program add ons, uh, I can enable any of these add ons to actually streamline Kodi to make it work a little bit better. Um, I've got Android add ons as well, which you saw uh, earlier that I can also install. Um, if I go to system, <clears throat> and add-ons again um, lots of different add-ons I can download and install automatically um, as I said Cody's quite complicated um, and I don't know if I can provide a good overview of what it's capable of but I will do that in a, in a future video um, so we're gonna get out of Cody Yes, I want to exit. So Netflix 
is similar to the YouTube client. In fact, if you've got a Netflix subscription, essentially all you do is you just put in your username and your password and it logs you directly into your account. And from there, you can either use the remote control or you can use the keyboard and start scrolling through some content. Um, it's very easy to navigate. Your titles are highlighted so you can actually see them. So for example, if I wanted to take a look at Captain America Winter Soldier, I click on it and since you just highlight it, click on it to play, give it a couple seconds, and then automatically it starts to play. And again, this is a nice uh, feature to have because normally in Netflix um, you either got to open up a web browser to view it or some, if you've got an older television that has, doesn't have a smart TV client built into it um, you've got to get a, a third party add-on to actually use it. Here it's fully available to you and once your credentials are in you've got access uh, to your content which is kind of cool. So I'm going to exit out of the movie and scroll back. Again, as I said, navigation is pretty smooth and I can highlight any content, start it up again. Okay. All right, and that's it for Netflix. So Cartoon HD is uh, similar to Showbox. Uh, it's an application that allows you to also watch movies. Um, so if you click on the menu, essentially what it does is it launches and it gives you this wall view of uh, available movies. Uh, just navigating through some of this, I did some earlier testing. Not all of these sources actually work. In fact, well, I found a lot of them to be broken, but for example, if I want to test out, say, Nick of Time, I click on it and I get two options here. I've got an info section that gives me a synopsis of the video, what year it was uh, released, what the rating is, tells me what the content is, and then I can actually uh, switch to the video section here and I click on the video. I've got an option here of selecting the resolution, so 720p. I click on play and away it goes. It starts playing automatic. Again, uh, some of these sources don't work, some of them do work, so it's a little bit hit and miss in terms of what content's actually going to work, what content's not going to work, but at the end of the day it's nice to have uh, the option available to you. Okay, so I'm just going to back out of Cartoon uh, Network, I'm going to close this. out of here. The Weather Channel, uh, exactly what you think it is. Here you can actually go in and set what city you're in, your city you, you are in, and get a forecast of what the actual weather is like. And then uh, if you want some extended information, um, you can get more detailed information about what the weather is like in Toronto today uh, and what it's going to be like tomorrow. Um, again, you just put in your city information and it pulls that up automatically. So again, nice information to have. And again, uh, the sling option. I don't have a sling box, but I install it just to show you um, how easy it is to actually install an application on the DreamLink. Uh, here's the other thing um, about the system that I actually kind of like. So say you've installed an application and you've used it and it doesn't work to your satisfaction. Well there's a blue button actually on the remote that you can actually hit and then you get this option if you want to uninstall it uh, which makes it very quick and very painless. Now actually let's move to the star of the show uh, and that's the DreamLink Online uh, application. Now here is probably the biggest highlight of this uh, specific device, the DreamLink T1, and that is the Dream Online application. Now, with the DreamLine uh, application, this is an IPTV uh, client that you can actually configure with your own IPT provider. I've covered it in the MAG254 uh, review where you can actually go out. There's plenty of IPTV providers that you can sign up with. Essentially, what you do is you give them the MAG I 
MAC address of your device. They provide you with a URL. You plug it into the device and it pulls in the channels. So here you can see I've got three sections that I can navigate. If I go to the settings section, um, I can go in and I can configure the IPTV provider of my choice. Uh, for today, I'm testing this with an IP, P, IPTV provider called IPTV Express. Um, and as you can see, once I've gone through and configured the information, it starts to pull in the channel list automatically. I've got 1,310 channels available to me. Those are English and international channels, um, but the selection list is broad. So if I back out of this, I've got two additional sections. So the live section is where you can actually go in and view the channel content. So if I click on it, essentially what it does is it starts uh, displaying uh, channel information over the internet. And as you can see, the quality is actually quite good. There's an EPG option on the remote that I can uh, click on and that allowed me to scroll through different channels and I can see what the next uh, program is available. This specific IPT provider actually broadcasts in 4K so that is again another uh, option available to you. Look hard, there are lots of IPTV providers that provide this content. So for example if I click on YTV I get to see Alvin and the Chipmunks. Now there's a red option. You can see there's a group option in the bottom right hand corner. If I click on that, then I can see the different uh, categories that are available. So there's English HD channels, there are standard definition channels, there are premium movies, learning and news, sports, cricket, kids, and then I get to my international channels. So if I go to uh, let's see, let's see what's in premium movies. Uh, it pulls up the premium movie channels, HBO, uh, Cinemax, Star Max, Showtime, Showcase. It's kind of cool. Go back to the group section. If I want to watch sports, I click on the sports section. And I get all the different sports channels that are available. So if I want to example watch TSN, click on it. <clears throat> and again, I get what's displaying on uh, TSN. Again, the channels that you pull in, a uh, reminder, are based on your provider. Some have small content, some have a lot of content. Shop around, there are some good providers that are actually out there, and they're very inexpensive compared to what you'd pay to a standard cable provider. Okay. I'm going to exit out of this. Now the final section, aside from the live television, is the video on demand section. Some providers provide a video on demand section, some of them don't, but if I click on this, um, I've got a group list of some of the different movies that are available. So, of course, I've got an English uh, new release section. I've got English collections, kids, and then I get into some international movie content. So, if I click on new releases, I am able to scroll over. I can see the cover art. I can see the title of the movie, the year, the director. I get a synopsis. And I've got options to just keep scrolling. So I can keep going down and I can go left to right to see uh, what's available. And exit out of this. And then back to the main menu. So uh, there you